Kofi, you won this one. Black Magic has done it again. One thing we talked about before the Ursa 12K that I'm not really seeing anywhere else is the first announcement that came out last night actually was about the Black Magic camera app. Uh, Android got its 2.0 update. I know there's a lot of people in the Android community that still are getting upset that not every single Android phone is accessible, but just know that Blackmagic's trying to do this the right way. Let's be honest, this is the downside to Android fragmentation but they want to make sure that if they're putting the app on a certain Android phone, it's going to work well and be optimized. And so they're testing a wide variety of phones. So new S25 owners, you're now added to the list of being able to get the app, of course. But the big news is they added their much anticipated from the iOS side, uh, remote functionality. So now you'll be able to use your Android phones and tablets as both remote cameras and remote controls for cameras and this also should include the Pixis. So I've just been doing some testing on this new update, right? And I have the update 2.0 running on a old Pixel 6 Pro, and we have the remote functionality at the top here, but unfortunately it seems like it does not run cross-platform, and it also currently is not supported to monitor on the Pixis. When I set this phone as a uh, remote camera, I cannot see it on the camera list on the iPhone. It doesn't show up at all. And when I set this to be the controller, neither the iPhone nor the Pixis shows up on the list. So I believe currently you can only use this feature for remoting multiple Android phones. Unfortunately, the only other Android phone I have is a Pixel 5a or whatever this is, which doesn't have the app support. So I can't download it. So just thought you guys should know. I think we're going to see this feature come to the new Ursa 12K uh, pretty soon based on this announcement because uh, I think this camera is about to get a whole lot more popular. So let's talk about that. I swear they are the only camera company to actually have board meetings about, hey, how can we make this more accessible to our consumers? If you haven't heard the news earlier this morning, Blackmagic announced a new stripped down version of their 12K LF. This is a camera where the package started at just under 15 grand US, but as of this morning, you can get just the body of that camera for just under seven. So this is why I love Blackmagic is because while other camera companies will come out with variants of their more expensive camera models, they almost go out of their way to make sure that the camera is also quite different. So that way, when you go to buy that lower cost option, you still have to be like, oh, but I'm missing out on X, Y, and Z. That's not happening here. This is the same exact sensor, camera body, all the bells and whistles and features that the $15,000 variant has. They literally just stripped it down in terms of accessories, media modules, and so on. In this way, if you're someone like me who already has a couple B-mount batteries, you got a number of CF Express Type B cards, and probably one of the few people out there who has native Cine EF glass, and already have the Ursa top handle and EVF. So for me, I literally would just need the camera body and the $99 battery plate. And when I first saw the news, I initially thought, that okay, this is gonna be fully stripped down. I see it doesn't have a battery plate on it. My guess is it's also not gonna come with any sort of media module. So you'll literally have to spend the $1,600 to buy the eight terabyte media module as well. Figuring that the camera would essentially just come with an empty slot right there or give you the ability to just record through one of the USB-C ports uh, to like an SSD with lower resolutions or frame rates. But no, again, this camera is not locked down at all and they actually are producing a new type of media module that will have dual CF Express Type B slots. And when you look at the different resolutions, frame rates, and the read and write speed necessary to achieve that quality in this camera, and then when I look at my CF Express Type B cards from Angelbird or Nova Chips, at least on paper, those cards should have no problem handling all those different specs. And even if you don't have a bunch of accessories already, this is a great starting point to where you can at least start out with a minimal kit for under $10,000 and get going and slowly kind of build up with accessories that you need. I think there's a lot more indie filmmakers that are at the level with their skill sets to where they could really utilize a camera like this, but don't have 15 grand to just drop. The stripped down version comes with an EF mount, which again, for people like me, I'm very happy with. I'm surprised it's not the locking EF like on my Pixis, but you can still swap it out for the PL mount if you want. If you eventually want to upgrade to the eight terabyte module, you can get that. You can get the Pixis monitor, even though this camera has like 
three monitors built into it. The other really interesting angle that I see it at, you had a pretty significant price gap between say the Pixis, which is three grand, and the Ursa Cine 12K, which again was 15. But now the price gap is only about $4,000. I know I'm saying only, but we're in the cinema camera world here. Here's the thing, I love my Pixis, but if you have the budget to do it, you are gaining so much going to this 12K LF. You still get an amazing full frame sensor. Who cares the fact that it's at 12K? The more impressive thing is the fact that you can do 9K, 8K, and 4K while utilizing the whole sensor and getting pretty awesome frame rates up to 240 frames per second in 4K, 8K, 120, you get built-in NDs, and oh my goodness, 16 stops of dynamic range. Also not to mention the body style is just way more built out. And did I already mention built-in NDs? I'm really, I'm really missing built-in NDs. For a long time, I think Blackmagic has been an incredible versatile B camera on many sets, and they've kind of slowly been working their way towards proving themselves to deliver an incredible image. But if you've ever worked with B-RAW, you know the Gen 5 color science well. And once you start getting into the specs like this Ursa 12K, as long as you continue to be fine with no autofocus, and let's be real, not being a low light king, I'd say the only downside of this camera is the fact that there is not a dual native ISO. But this is a camera that is more built for being on a properly lit set. It uh, It's looking pretty good, looking like my dream camera just got a lot more attainable. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.